Hello, welcome to Kologica Worldwide. My name is Vera Kolodzik and this is Kologica Podcast. Hello and welcome to Kologica Podcast. My name is Vera Kolodzik and this is my podcast. Uh, this is now Kologica Worldwide. It's actually my first episode in English. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Portuguese. Uh, I've worked as an actress for more than 20 years. I did a lot of TV, film and cinema. But in 2020, I decided to launch this podcast to somehow inspire people to live in a more positive way and to change their way of thinking um, somehow. So I've had over a hundred guests uh, in the Portuguese version of this podcast. I've interviewed uh, psychologists, healers, activists, uh, lots of people. Uh, I talk about uh, mental health and uh, food habits. Uh, and so my, my, first, um, my first guest for this international version of this podcast is Jesse. In Chospey. <laughs> Hi, Vera. Am I saying this right? You're saying it perfectly. Yes. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, uh, excuse my French. My French is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jesse, you've studied uh, maths and biochemistry, and you just your new book just came out, uh, which is The Glucose Revolution. Can you say it in Portuguese? Uh, Revolução da Glicose. Or in French, La Revolution de la Glicose. <laughs> can, you say, can you say it in German? Um, <clears throat> Kolotzik. That's all I can <laughs> say in German. <laughs> it's actually my name. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I could try all these different accents. Um, but let's just stick to, to Glucose Revolution, which is your book. Uh, you have this very well-known Instagram account called the Glucose Goddess. Um, and you're trying to help people to improve uh, their diet habits and, and you know, to, to lead healthier and happier lives right yeah i'm trying to teach people about how their body works i'm trying to give people like a baseline understanding of biochemistry and i teach some really simple tips that can completely transform their lives that are super easy and i think that's why you know it's a revolution it's because it's truly empowering mm. the information i change and it's uh It's life-changing. So yeah. I'm happy to be here to share it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm very happy to have you here to welcome you in this beautiful place. I love it. Uh, Palacio do Governador in Lisbon. Um, <laughs> so it's called Palacio. It's a palace because for a goddess, this would be the, the, <laughs> the best setting. <laughs> I'm but, blushing. <laughs> but let me ask you, Jesse, my first question is, um, what makes you feel like a goddess? Oh, wow. <laughs> Waking up... Um, and not turning on my phone mm -hmm. for like an hour, having a green tea or a coffee, looking over a view of a nice city. Wow. That to me is like the perfect way to start a day. I wish I could start my day like that every day. But when I do that, I feel like on top of the world. Wow, that's amazing. That's really, really beautiful. <laughs> and what, what made you um, be so interested in understanding what happens inside your body because mm. that's how it all started right yeah honestly suffering i suffered a lot when i was a teenager i broke my spine jumping off a waterfall mm. so that sucked and wow. then yeah and then my mental health was like just absolute crap for many many years and at that young age i realized very profoundly that if you don't have your health physical and mental you have nothing you know i was studying in school And I could not focus on my studies. Nothing mattered. My relationships didn't matter. Like the clothes I was wearing didn't matter. Whatever. I just wanted to feel good when I woke up in the morning. And so I went on the quest to try to understand myself so I could figure out how to feel good again. So was your body was, was physically fine, but you just felt like emotionally and mentally uh, you weren't so well. Exactly. So my, you know, I had surgery. I have lots of metal in my spine. And my, my body healed in a matter of months. But then my mental health started really, really mm. suffering. So I had really intense episodes of anxiety, depression. I was super confused. I could never be alone. I had a lot of stress mm. in my body. And so I went on this journey. I was like, okay, I need to understand how my body works. So step one, I finished my mathematics undergrad studies. And I went to study biochemistry as a master's. That was super cool. I learned some stuff. 
Still didn't feel great. Then I went well, to I really work. admire people who like chemistry. For me, it was just so boring in school. <laughs> but, you know, to me, it was only interesting because I was suffering and I had to solve a problem. Yeah. So it kind of changes your perspective on stuff. All mm. of a sudden, biochemistry becomes really interesting yeah. if you need to feel better. And then I worked in genetics for five years in San Francisco in Silicon Valley. Still didn't feel better. But then something amazing happened. Randomly, one day, I was given the opportunity to put on a continuous glucose monitor. And these are devices attached to the back of your arm that are made for people with diabetes. And I put one on as a non-diabetic, as a sort of experimental study. You know, in Silicon Valley, you're always trying new technologies and stuff. And that actually completely changed my life. And it's the reason I talk about glucose to this day. And I realized, Vera, that glucose spikes, so big increases in blood sugar concentration, were actually one of the triggers for my mental health problems. And finally, after 10 years, I had a clue. I realized that the way I was eating was influencing my mental health. And this, this is uh, for everyone. So like uh, sugar really influences your mental health in general. So it depends on the person, right? What mm -hmm. I learned is that most of us have these glucose spikes every day mm -hmm. and we don't know it. And depending on who we are, they will lead to different symptoms. So in me, it was mental health problems. In other people, it might be cravings, chronic fatigue, acne, infertility, difficult menopause symptoms, poor sleep, inflammation, psoriasis, type 2 diabetes, like the list goes on and on. I was one of the first people to find out by looking at very early studies that the vast majority of the population has glucose spikes every day, not just diabetics, every single person. And we walk around with these spikes and we don't know they're happening, but we suffer wow. the consequences. So through my studies then, I, well, through my research, looking at the scientific studies that were available, I found out all these tips that helped me heal. And then I started sharing them. So how, how can you be, become more conscious or, or of these uh, glucose spikes? I mean, what, does, what is this exactly in yeah. your body? Like what happens in, in your daily life that, that might be a symptom of, uh, of a glucose spike? So the most common symptoms that I would say the, like most of us experience, and I used to have them as well on top of the mental health stuff, was number one, cravings for sweet foods. Mm -hmm. So during the day, you're like, mm, I could have a cookie, I could have some chocolate, I could have a candy bar. That's a very common one. Number two, being tired. So having energy levels that are very unstable. You need a nap in the afternoon, you need a lot of coffee, etc. And number three, it's being hungry every two hours. So you have breakfast and two hours later, you're hungry again and the cycle repeats. Those are the most common symptoms of glucose spikes. But then... So you're not supposed to be hungry every two hours? No. I know it's wild because yeah. I thought that was actually you know, normal. I thought that cravings were normal. I thought that PMS symptoms were normal. Mm. So no, you're not actually supposed to be hungry every two hours. You're supposed to stay full for like four or five, six hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So that, that reduces to how many meals Three a day? Three meals a day. Three meals yeah, a day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. What if you fast? Well, fasting is totally fine. It depends on the person, you know. Um, but if you fast, then fewer meals, I guess. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So this is all very... This is a revolution. Totally. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. like understanding the impacts. Because we talk about uh, a lot about sugar. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people might say things like, oh, no, no, but I'm, I'm really conscious about my, my sugar intake. I do not eat sugar. But uh, my breakfast is an orange juice and a piece of bread. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit yeah. about this? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So I want to share a little bit about what glucose is and where it comes mm -hmm. from. So you get a bit of context because... You know, it's sciencey stuff and I'm here to make it simple. Yeah. So your body uses glucose for energy. Like right now, the finger cells in your hand are using glucose to hold your iPad. Okay. Your brain cells are using glucose to like look at me and figure out what to say next. Every cell in your body uses glucose for energy. So glucose is very helpful. Mm -hmm. The main way we get glucose to our body is by eating foods that are either sweet or starchy so by sweet foods i mean anything that tastes sweet so fruit candy desserts chocolate whatever and starchy foods are things like pasta rice potatoes bread those also have glucose so when you talk about glucose you're not talking just about sugar and sweet foods you're talking about sugars and also starches now to your question about like this person who say i don't eat sugar but i have orange juice in the morning 
So any of these foods, these starches, these sugars I just mentioned, they all turn to glucose in the body. Mm. So it doesn't matter if you're not having, you know, table sugar. If you're having an orange juice, you're also giving sugar to your body. Yeah, this happened. Uh, you know, a friend of mine, he he developed diabetes because he he would eat half a watermelon per day. Mm. He was so like, he loved watermelon so much. And he, th he thought, no, but I'm healthy, you know, like he had really healthy habits. And he was plant-based and everything. Um, but then he developed diabetes because of how, how much watermelon he was eating. He must have been eating a lot yeah, of watermelon. Yeah, he was eating a lot of watermelon. And then he was really surprised. He was like, oh, I had no idea how bad fruit could actually be. Yeah, so on the fruit topic, What's really interesting to find out, and when I found this out, I was like mind blown, is that the watermelon you buy today, or even the oranges or the apples you buy at the store, they're actually not natural. Like the fruit we buy today is the child of thousands of years of breeding, you know, of crossing, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. that farmers have been doing okay. to create these super juicy, super sweet, almost like natural candies. So if you look at like a banana today, versus a banana like a million years ago, they look nothing the same. The banana from a million years ago is very small. It's full of seeds and it's not sweet. Well, if you go to Madeira, Madeira it's like the islands in Portugal, you'll, you'll find that the bananas are really small. So yeah. <laughs> and that's the natural state of fruit. Okay. So then. when we eat fruit today, we're eating these like man-made creations with lots of sugar in them. <laughs> you should try the, uh, the Madeira bananas, I think. Yeah? <laughs> I think you'll, yeah, uh, yeah, they're like very them? interesting. They're very sweet and yeah. very small. Ah, so. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> yes. So, but you know, if you want to eat something sweet, a piece of whole fruit is still the best thing to eat mm. because it has fiber in it and fiber is really protective for your glucose levels but you were talking about the candy and mm -hmm. about the starch and about bread and pasta can we still uh, can we still um eat candy or eat sweets or eat pasta or bread and have a healthy uh, a healthy diet in Hel terms of healthy glucose, glucose levels so yeah. that is exactly the question i asked myself when i first learned about glucose i was like I need to avoid these glucose spikes. That was my objective. Can I do this while still eating my spaghetti and my chocolate cake? Because I love spaghetti and chocolate cake. The, good, the answer is yes. This is the magic of the approach and the hacks I've put together. They allow you to still eat everything you love while also avoiding the glucose spikes. So healing your physical and your mental health. And it's easy things like if you're going to have sugar, don't have it on an empty stomach. Have it as dessert and before you go for a walk, you know? If you have pasta, don't have it at the beginning of a meal, have it after some veggies and some proteins. If you're gonna eat whatever sweet or starchy food you're gonna eat, have some vinegar before. So that's the whole concept of my method. Oh, okay, so eat, yeah, well, I know this because I just had lunch with you <laughs> and, and, and this lunch started with a glass of vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> well, a tablespoon of vinegar tablespoon in of water. Tablespoon, not a glass. Yeah. Yeah, what yeah, did yeah, you think of that actually? Uh, it was actually okay. It mm. tasted um, tasted good, and uh, and yeah, the thing is, I I didn't f feel um, tired after my meal. Yeah, I think that's the thing. So let's break it down. We started with vinegar, mm -hmm. then we had some olives and some tomatoes as a starter, because you should always start your meals with veggies. And then we had a main, then we had the chocolate tart, actually. Yes. Which is totally fine, as long as you have it at the end of the meal. And then we went biking for 10 minutes. Yes. And that's also one of the hacks. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun going biking for 10 minutes. Yeah, but it could be a walk or it could or be dancing just... or cleaning your apartment or playing with your kid, like whatever. That's good. Dancing yeah. and, and cleaning the apartment. Or yes. both at the same time. Or both at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like that idea. <laughs> I really like that idea. Um... So what is, so in terms of our health, yeah. um, how, how does, uh, how do the genetics influence our health and how does diet influence our health? What's most important? A diet and lifestyle by really? far. Yeah. So do you think the lifestyle and diet can really, um, you know, you know, turn tables on the, on the genetic part Absolutely. of it? And we know this by looking at identical twins. So people who have the same DNA, they can have vastly different you know, health situations. One can develop type 2 diabetes and the other one not. And that's not because they have different genetics. They have the same genetics. It's because they're making different choices in their, in their life, in their social interactions, in their stress levels, etc. And when I was working in genetics, I really learned that, you know, I thought that before I thought that genetics determined everything. I thought that if I could understand my DNA, I would be able to find out how to feel good in the morning. Turns out, mm -hmm. 
zero like just no your dna tells you nothing about what to do to feel good in the morning it tells you a little bit about like your predispositions to certain diseases etc but what really matters is your lifestyle how you're eating how you're moving how you're sleeping how your stress is etc how was your lifestyle in your recovery uh, process from your accident Oh, good question. So I think one of the main things that looking back, I'm like, oh, that was a big problem is that after this, these two weeks of being immobilized in a bed because my spine was broken and then a very intense eight hour surgery mm -hmm. where I lost a lot of blood and I, I thought I was going to die. It was really stressful. At no point after did anybody come to me and say, hey, you just went through a traumatic experience. Let's process the stress out of your body. Let's help your body like move some of that trauma zero nothing and so I kept all this stress inside you know for a long time and I think that's why it started causing mental health issues and it compounded with the glucose spikes and everything but that was a big miss so I just went back to my normal life I there was no like there was no process there was no processing there was no you know ceremony like looking back I could have done so much stuff to to help and now I know the things I need to do when I go through something difficult but back then I was 19 I had no clue what do you need to do what are the tips <sighs> so there's a few things that I do when I go through like a stressful day or a stressful interaction or even when I take a plane and I go somewhere because it makes me feel a bit ungrounded I will stretch so really you know move the tightness from my muscles and my joints if I can I'll find somewhere that has some grass And I'll put my bare feet and my bare hands like yes. on, on ground. I love that. And Are you that, a tree hugger as well? Of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. And that, and that actually, we know how it works, you know. It moves your electrons, excessive electrons from your body to the ground. It's literally grounding. It's almost like you're connecting your nervous system to the nervous system of the planet. It's so mm. cool. So that I love. I love shaking. So I like, love hearing this from a scientist because yeah. sometimes we talk about, you know, like connection to nature and please connect and feel grounded and uh, walk bare feet feet mm -hmm. and everything and then we think oh you know like oh the spiritual uh, whatever you know those, those people but it, it's really great because you as a scientist you're actually saying no this is true it's it's, but it's like i think it's completely freaking ridiculous for people to dismiss stuff when we don't have a scientific study that proves this in a clinical setting like guys you know, a hundred years ago, we didn't know DNA existed. I mean, like we, you know, we'll find out more scientific explanations for stuff. Mm -hmm. But right now there are things that really work when you're stressed and that you should do, even if there's not a 10 year retrospective study, you know? So anyway, I do that. I love shaking. So I'll just lay on the ground and sort of like shake my body. That really relaxes the nervous system. I'll make sure to eat well and to not have glucose spikes because mm. I know that if I have a glucose spike, it's going to send my mental health completely crazy. So yeah, it's actually the first time I'm talking about about this this mental health stuff and i'm really fascinated by it it's um yeah. it's really yeah, incredible me too. When i'm you always trying to, yeah to find the, the relations between you know our habits uh relating to our mental health as well because sometimes we're just not i mean if we're anxious and we eat sugar it's gonna you know it's it's worse but i, I feel this because you know i try listening to my body and everything but i cannot explain this in a scientific way that's why i'm so interesting to hearing this from you yeah. Um, and it's normal that when we're stressed, we want to eat sugar because sugar releases dopamine in the brain and dopamine is the pleasure chemical. So it makes you feel pleasure. So if you're stressed, if you're tired, if you're sad, if you're anxious, if you're angry, like whatever, food is a way to sort of placate your brain that's struggling. So it's it makes sense that we go towards that. And I think often people think that also if they're tired, sugar is going to give them energy. But Actually, that is not the case. Sugar will give them pleasure for a short amount of time, but sugar and glucose spikes actually hurt your long-term ability to make energy in your body. Mm. So you have short-term pleasure, but long-term you're starting the chronic fatigue roller coaster. So what's the trick? What's the hack? What can we do? So I think the first thing you can do is switch from having a sweet breakfast to having a savory breakfast. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a habit that really helps balance your glucose levels, that really helps your body thrive, that gives you all your energy back. So in the morning, you build a breakfast that's around protein and fibers and fats. And if you want to eat some starch or sugar, that's fine, but do it for taste. Don't do it as like the main base of your breakfast. But would you say like, it, this is also a cultural thing because when you go to Asia, you know, they'll have soup for breakfast. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, do you think, I mean, we have this cultural influence that really, I mean, for us as Europeans, for you as a French, you know, if you feel like, no, you cannot eat a croissant in the morning. It's like, what, what do you mean I cannot eat a croissant? <laughs> But I think this is all modern and recent, you know, mm. I think that we used to just have normal food for breakfast. We didn't have this culture around like breakfast should be sweet. I think because of all the marketing around uh, breakfast cereal and fruit juices, we kind of got indoctrinated to thinking that you need to eat sugar in the morning to have energy. But that's not how it used to be. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't have like a different approach to breakfast. We just had normal food. Yeah. So and before breakfast, is there any hacks that we should do or is just before breakfast? Yes. Like Are we supposed to, to drink to drink vinegar before breakfast or, so, or <laughs> it's it's okay if we don't? I mean, let me tell you, well, like my habits, I usually I wake up in the morning and I always have a glass of water with a little bit of lime and uh, bicarbonato de sodio. I don't know how you should yeah, say yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, baking soda. Yeah, baking soda mm -hmm. and, and lemon. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the first thing I... Why baking soda? Is it baking soda? Not baking soda. Bicarbonate de sodio. Bicarbonate de sodio. But why do I you don't have know. that? Oh, this is the, you know, the, the lost in translation <laughs> bit of this podcast. <laughs> Vodka? Why do you have vodka? Well, vodka. Yes, I have vodka oh in the morning, <laughs> like right before my breakfast. Um, it's uh, supposedly to um, to make my um, blood more alkaline. So, my, hmm. so, to, so for my uh, pH, yeah, acidity oh, well. wise. I had no idea. I have to look it up. I have no idea how that works. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but you you advise lemon as well. I mean, lemon is something that you can use instead of the. So lemon vinegar. is great. So the vinegar hacks. So this is one of the 10 hacks that are mm -hmm. in my book. And these hacks, you can do them whenever is easy. So you don't always have to do them. It's not like a strict, like you must. It's like, this is cool tips that we learned from recent science that you should compose with on a daily basis. So yes, having a spoon of vinegar in some water before a meal helps reduce the... A spoon the full of vinegar, vinegar helps the glucose spikes go down. down. The glucose <laughs> yes, I'm so happy we sang. I really wanted yes, us to sing. Yes, yes. Uh, This is a great version of it. <laughs> Come on, we should... <laughs> I think I should make an Instagram post. Yeah, let's okay, do it. Okay, after the podcast, do it. we're going to we'll do, do it. We'll do it. <laughs> Perfect. So a tablespoon of vinegar in a big glass of water before a meal reduces the glucose spike of the meal by up to 30%, which is super cool for your health and for your cravings and for your hunger and for your energy. So should you do it before every meal? If you want to, do I do it before breakfast? No, I do it, you know, when there's nice vinegar next to me and I'm about to sit down for lunch or dinner, I do it then. But really it's about you as an individual, like figuring out when you want to do the hacks, when they make sense, when they're enjoyable and not stressful. Mm. Yes, But course. the savory breakfast thing, I do it every day. Because if I have sweet food for breakfast, now I know how bad I'm going to feel mm -hmm. and how hungry I'm going to be and how my mental health is going to be all over the place for the whole day. So I just, even if you pay me, I do not have a sweet breakfast. Yeah. Because I just like, I know the pain it's going to cause. And once you make the switch, I don't think you can go back, really. But I still eat lots of sugar because I love sugar, but I eat it for dessert after lunch, after dinner, never on an empty stomach. And after I eat sugar, I try to use my muscles for a little bit so that my muscles soak up some, some of that glucose. Okay, so we can still have sugar. So let me yes. tell you about my um, guilty pleasure. Tell me. My guilty pleasure Let's call it is... pleasure, not guilty. Well, yes, well, it's just an expression. Yes, it's not, it's not guilty. I'm fine. I'm not guilty of it at all. <laughs> well, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm usually very conscious about my diet. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm plant-based, but not fundamentalist because my, basically, I think of my intentions of my diet options. That's, this is something that I really think you should think about. Um, so, for example, I became a vegan, well, not because of the animals, although, of course, I love animals and everything, but it was more because of sustainability and my health. So what happens? Sometimes, um, well, for example, now I was, I was filming this travel show around Portugal, and when I go to these villages... Uh, like these small villages in Portugal and I say, hey, I'm vegan. They're like, what? What are you going to eat? And they give me like lettuce and tomato with rice. And I'm like, okay, is this fulfilling my intentions? Maybe not. So if, if it's not, then maybe I'll just ask for an omelet because it's going to be healthier and it's still sustainable because I'm not eating, you know, that much. Um... So I really think we should we should think of our intentions because for you like you're not uh, plant based or anything you eat everything you want yeah right and this is the same with the with the crisps that I was telling you with the fries I love French fries and I love crisps it's my guilty pleasure um, but I can still have them right 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I just want to say something. I would do anyway because <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree with you. You know, any dogma can be abused. Like I went vegan when I was a teenager because I don't know, I was starting to read stuff. I read the China study and I was like, oh my God, this is everything. And then all I ate was Oreos and pasta. And so my period stopped and I had lots of pimples and like, it's not because something is vegan that it's necessarily good. You have yeah. to be a bit smart behind it. So is it, you know, maybe you were like, okay, I have the choice between a vegan option that's not going to fulfill me, not going to nourish me and something not vegan that will. It makes a lot of sense. Can we just talk about the guilty pleasure thing? I mm -hmm. want to rebrand it. Let's call it your happy pleasure. Okay. Because I, I don't, like that. I don't like the sense of like, oh, if you eat chocolate, you have to feel guilty. Like, no, you're no, doing no, no, it for pleasure. Course. You're making a, a decision for pleasure, not for like glucose health, but the decision for pleasure is totally fine. Like we're humans and pleasure is a big part of our lives. So happy pleasure. Yeah, happy. Let me just have this uh, uh, small um, commercial moment here because I have a website which is called logica.com and I'm now selling vibrators and um, pleasure accessories. So check it out. <laughs> happy pleasure is on logica.com. <laughs> so happy pleasures, a lot of happy pleasures there. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say this. I love it. <laughs> Um, so, uh, talking about happy pleasures, what makes you happy? Oh, um, I love cats. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I'm not a cat person at all. I know. <laughs> I miss my cat. Um, what makes me happy? Um, yeah, I love cats. I love feeling rested. I love being with my friends. I love meeting amazing people like mm. you. Um, I love seeing nice things. I love not being on my phone. Good mental health makes me very happy. Very, very happy. Yeah, good mental, mental health. And what do you do to, to, I mean, everything you said here, like stretching and being conscious of sleeping. your... Sleeping. Sleeping. Yeah, I really don't drink very much alcohol. Um, glucose spike regulation is huge for me. Yeah. 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 Food I'm, has a big effect. Food has a big... I'm going to try, I'm gonna try yes. that from now on, obviously. Yes, I mean... Yeah. Um, what makes you feel the most like your true self? Oh, um, I think when I talk about glucose stuff <laughs> and no. also, yeah, this is something beautiful about you, Jesse, is that oh. you're so passionate about this topic that y y you really speak from the heart. And this mm. is really beautiful because you're trying, I mean, I, well, this is what I feel. I get this feeling that you're really trying to expand this knowledge and, and to to share this to yeah. actually improve people's lives in a way that's not like restrictive judgmental you know makes you feel guilty like there's so many people suffering and they, they every day they're eating in a way that makes their suffering worse just like I was and they don't know it and I just want people to know that there's easy stuff they can do like eating their food in the right order you know that can really transform how they're feeling and the other day I heard this quote that is um, the the best person you can serve in life, like your, your biggest audience or whoever can be your clients, whatever, is the person that you used to be. And I used mm -hmm. to be that person who was completely lost, suffering, eating in a way that was making everything worse, and I had no idea. And so I just really want to get this information to as many people as possible. Because when you understand these key, like, easy foundational biochemistry principles mm -hmm. of how to eat, your life transforms. That's so beautiful. I just got goosebumps and Aww. I'm getting a bit emotional. No, really, because th this is such a beautiful thing. Like mm. the best the, the best person you can serve is the person that you used to be. It's a bit like um, taking care of your child. Mm. You know, like I think we all have traumas from our childhood. We all, you know, we, we're all like trying to deal with our own shit, basically. And, and, and just being aware and like taking care of us as we would take care of the child we used to be. Yeah. And this is... This is beautiful. Thank you so much for this. Like, Aww. thank you so much for this insight. It was really, really beautiful. I'm so glad. Um, so we're coming to an end here. Uh, but I'm just going to ask you this one question. Okay. So let me just um, give you some context. Okay. <laughs> so this this podcast is called Kologica, which is a play on words with my name, Kolodzik. Mm -hmm. And Logica means logic. So usually uh, I say that Kologica is like, I would say, your way of living in positively so my last question is what is your kologica in life so wait explain to me a bit more what you mean <laughs> like my way of living positively is like yes. my motto like yes. my it could be your motto it could be mm. 
there's one thing that I remind myself whenever I'm going through a really difficult phase in my life and that keeps me like afloat and positive. It's that comfort and growth cannot coexist. So if you're uncomfortable, it means you're growing. So that helps me a lot. I'm like, okay, I'm really uncomfortable. I really hate the situation. I, I hate whatever's happening. Um, but can I find growth in here? You know, can I find a way that this is teaching me something about myself? Can I find a way in which this is showing me a boundary I have to establish or whatever? So I try to approach all very uncomfortable situations in that fashion. And it's worked out pretty well. Wow. I, wow, I love that. I mean, although, although, let me just... I'm going to give you my opinion on this, yeah. although I really agree with what you're saying. But also, I don't think that um, being uncomfortable or suffering is necessary for growing. I Completely. mean, it's 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 not like, oh, no, I'm not going to grow if I don't suffer or if I'm not Completely. uncomfortable. And by the way, I experienced that because I used to idealize um, pain, you know, because I was in so much pain for so many years. A part of me was like, Pain is good, you know, you're, suffering means you're, you know, a bigger person. And a, But actually, that was just my brain trying to make sense of it all. And when I came out of that and I was like, no, there's no reason to sacralize, idealize pain. Mm -hmm. Really, there is none. That helped me so much. But when it does happen, b by having this sort of framework, I'm able to move through it really quickly, put something in place that removes the pain and then keep going. Yeah, we know we have this expression in Portuguese, which is dores de crescimento, which is... Wait, say that again? Dores de crescimento, dores which is like, crescimento. it's basically a growing pain. You know, yes. when like your your bones are oh, like yeah. stretching when you're a kid, when you're like in teenage years and you feel the, this pain. So this is what it but well, this is how you can, you know, face pain in, in yeah. a positive way. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jesse. So um, check out, uh, I'm just going to tell everyone to check out your Instagram page, The Glucose Goddess. You have tons of tips there. And check out your book, which has now come out in lots of languages. Yes. So uh, in Portuguese, of course, English. And it's now oh my like God. Spanish, French, Spanish, French. Dutch, Japanese, Korean, German. I mean, any language, really. So there's no excuse not to no, read this no book. <laughs> no excuse not to follow these tips. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you want to check out my work, check out my, my website, collogic.com. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Vera. You're amazing. Thank you. <laughs>